We are live. We are live. We're Welcome live. to another edition of In Vivo with the Express News. I'm your host today, Nick Talba. I'm joined today by a sports columnist, Mike Finger, and Spurs beat writers, Tom Orsborn and Jeff McDonald. We're going to be discussing the upcoming Spurs season. Lots to talk about. We got rookies. We got Wimby. Uh, we're going to let everyone take a little bit minute to filter in, though, uh, since this is a live event. We, uh, <laughs> We want everyone to come in, ask questions. At the end of about 10, 15 minutes, we'll start answering those questions. We're going to preview the season a little bit. So make sure you hit that Q&A button down there at the, at the chat and not just the chat button. That Q&A button is how you will get your questions onto the thing where I can actually see it and read them and let these guys answer them. Otherwise, we will not know you exist. You will just be somewhere caught in the existential plane of not existing. Uh, so been you've been there? Yeah. You've been there? <laughs> All right. So, all right. So we're going to let people, oh, look at that. We've already got some, we already got some questions coming in. Uh, yeah, I just saw the Danny Green card. We'll touch on Danny Green. We'll touch on him a little bit later. Uh, the Spurs season, though, uh, what do you think is going to be the biggest factor of these guys? Uh, this season, we get 22 and 60. What The season, they have to win, right? I mean, that's, they have to win more anyway. That's going to be the biggest thing, right? They brought in Harrison Barnes. We brought in Chris Paul. Harrison Barnes mentioned first. Harrison, <laughs> that's a promotion. Well, he might get more minutes. Well, maybe. We'll yeah. It's fair. Yeah. He might get more minutes than Chris Paul. I mean, might play more games. I will definitely play more games. Chris is 39. I will tell you this, just early impressions of Harris, of the, of the new team. And this is maybe unnecessarily harsh, but we'll start out going crazy. Like if Harrison Barnes is our biggest addition, that's, that's probably a problem. <laughs> <laughs> We had, a com- take, we had a hot, comment hot that we take. had an existential angst right hot out of the gate, and then yeah. my finger just doubled down on it. He's a hot take artist over here. <laughs> Do, would you like? Let's start with it. Do you, if he has a better season than Chris Paul and Stefan Castle, like are, are are the Spurs doing well? You need a lot from Chris Paul. You don't need Chris Paul to play eighty-two games. You don't need Chris Paul. By the way, did you introduce us? You didn't. Introduce I, did, I introduced. Oh. Every, I introduced everyone. You don't need Chris Paul to, for everyone to come to in. be an all star in your existential dread phase when he was talking. You don't need Chris Paul to be an all star. You don't need Chris Paul to play eighty-two yeah. games. Uh, you don't need him to be what he was even five years ago. You don't need Stefan Castle to be rookie of the year. But I think you need significant contributions from those guys. And Harrison Barnes is around to be kind of a locker room guy, mentor. I don't think you're expecting Harrison Barnes to be an impact type player. We're starting with yeah. that. What Am I wrong? I mean, get to 35 wins or north of that. Doesn't he have to? I don't think so. No, no I, I, I think he's starting. He's, uh, I think he'll start out starting, yeah. but I don't, and I'm not here to like, uh, well, who would criticize t- Harrison Barnes? I just don't think that he is a key to their on court success. Like, you need, mm-hmm. I don't think you need 12 and six from him or anything like that. I think it's just be around, be an influence, provide some productive minutes, you know, 20 minutes a night, whatever. But I, I don't want him to be Doug McDermott. Eh, like uh, 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 the it higher end, the a higher end Doug McDermott. Yeah. They did not add Harrison Barnes. I don't think to be an impact on the court player. Yeah. Am I already starting with controversy here? I don't know. I think I think we'll end up with the twelve and six though. I, I mean, I, th- well, I think if you're expecting that, you're 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 setting yourself up for disappointment. We started this with a Harrison Barnes. I know. I was, I was like, well, yeah, you you did that. <laughs> well, he did uh, Nick, Nick Talbot. He the just host, mentioned the name. And I just mentioned the, the name. the first name he mentioned this He podcast. was in the middle of a question, and you interrupted the question. Because we're starting with Harrison that. Barnes. <laughs> Where do you want to go, Jeff? <laughs> no, you're in charge now, buddy. <laughs> and everyone thought we would start with Wimby, right? That's yeah. the, Who? Um, but there's not a lot of questions there. He's just good. Wimby's good. Wimby's good. I mean, but, Tom, what do you think about uh, the the newcomers? Chris Paul, Stefan Castle, Harrison Ingram, yeah. Harrison <laughs> Barr. Wow. Ingram. I'll, I'll start with Riley Cass- Lennox. <laughs> <laughs> but with, no, who's the who's the biggest impact newcomer? That's a good question to well, start with. Chris Paul. Yes. I mean, Chris think- Paul more than Stefan Castle. In the short term, yes. Wasn't the premise of this conversation, didn't it start with getting to 35 wins? Well, we didn't get to the end of the question, so I'm not sure. Okay. (laughs) And to get to 35, that plateau or Uh above, Chris Paul has to stay healthy and be be not Chris Paul, vintage Chris Paul, but a good Chris Paul. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And who's second on the newcomers? Well, so you want Steph Castle to be Uh there. Um, and he probably will have a heck of a rookie season, I think, from what I've seen. It's been a small sample size. Yep. But I think you also need Barnes 
uh, to contribute to be uh-huh. what he's been the last couple of seasons. Again, to get to that 35 wins or north of 35 wins. Okay. Yeah, to compete for a playoff, like a playing in spot, not really a playoff spot. I don't think, I don't think this team's going to finish in the top six. I think you can have Harrison Barnes be bad and get there. I think he's got to. I think you can. I think you can, actually. Do you think he can be Jorge <laughs> Dang? don't have to play. I don't think. He, yeah. Like they're already trying to figure out who's a, who to start. His his influence <laughs> is important. Yeah. Uh, his his just his baseline. Like I, yeah. he can just provide minutes that don't, don't kill you. Okay, that's important to have him around. You know, know what to do. Yeah, in the closing minutes of a game, in in right. key moments when they need a bucket, whatever. Know what to do. I don't think he needs to be well, what he was the last year, the year before, for the Spurs to be good. I don't think okay. he's that pivotal. If you, okay. if you're in a close game at the end of the game. It, Chris Paul and Harrison are on the court, aren't they? They try to Harrison win the game. Harrison might not be. Like, I, I, I don't mean to... This, to I know. I mean, it also, it also might just be small sample size theater, but he has looked not not good in the two preseason games. That's, that's sort of... I'm helping... Uh, I'm helping the Spurs Thank fans you. out there feel better about how Harry Barnes looks because and, and some of that could be first, old, uh, you know, an older right. guy working right. his way into the season, working his way into training camp. Right. But if you're just going to go based off the two games we've seen him, he's 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 been not great. Yeah, and he's a Man. he's he's the second oldest guy on the team in the preseason. Like I don't know if his want to his try hard is totally there. Understandably, I mean, this is when. Teams work stuff out the preseason games. I mean, Victor Wembanyama didn't look great in his first preseason game last night. Also, Tim, like Tim, Tony, and Manu weren't just going pell mell right. in their preseason games either. So. It's hard for for Harrison Barnes, I would assume, to get worked up about like I'm really going to get yeah. motivated <laughs> here in this first game. But my you point is, to this podcast, he may want to leave. You, right. My seriously. point is, maybe no, we'll no, use Harrison, maybe he'll use it as motivation. Going back to the trade of. Um, how the Spurs inserted themselves into the Sacramento, right. um, the Chicago right. deal. Yeah. The Spurs kind of did uh-huh. those teams a favor, how we're going to make this trade work salary cap wise. Yeah. And we're going to take Harrison Barnes off your hands. The only two guys that they could have taken were Kevin Herter, Harrison Barnes. Right. Harrison wanted to come here. That's yeah. a big way that Harrison can contribute yeah. to the Spurs this year is a veteran who wants to be around. Yeah. Like that's, that's awesome. Um, but the Spurs didn't give anything up really to get him. And in fact, they got a draft pick out of the deal. So I think setting your expectations that Harrison Barnes is going to be integral to this team's success. I, I don't think he... Does anyone remember that old Saturday Night Live sketch? Probably. Lowered expectations. Yeah. yeah. That's remind, that's remind, it's Bill remind, Hartman, right? <laughs> yeah, it reminds me of this uh, discussion here. Thank you. Now that we've got seven minutes on Harrison Barnes, maybe <laughs> one minute on Chris Paul how, and zero how, minutes how, on Wimby. How many like viewers are we losing with our Harrison Barnes screed here. Probably far too many. <laughs> well, from the Harrison Barnes fan club. Well, uh, la- well this is live. It's a rare situation yeah. where usually on the Spurs Insider podcast, available on, on all your digital devices. By the way, we didn't talk about our secure location. I- We're in a secure location, uh, top secret, all together. This is a rare opportunity. Mm-hmm. Um, but usually on the Spurs Insider podcast, which you can listen to on YouTube, Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts. We'll just name all the podcasts. We uh, we uh, we we're not live, so now we can talk about how last night we the saw point. the Chris Paul the debut in San Antonio. Is there any sort of like uh, delay, like a thirty second delay in case one for, of us for uh, cursing? Yeah, in case one of us. I, I loses think we're, we're just we gambling. We're gambling that we're all going to maintain our the FCC word. violation <laughs> waiting to happen here. But what did you think of the first? Chris Paul to Victor Wimbanyama lob pass. That was nice. Like it was one. Took you, a long to get to it. You, you're a thousand words on it thousand today. Words on it today. You're a thousand That's, words on it today, and now you're in a live event, and you say that was nice. I mean, it was it was kind of interesting because people have been waiting for that for, I mean, since Chris signed here, right? Yeah. Like, oh my god, we can't wait to see. And then, yeah. then in like it took an entire quarter, and people were like, "What's going on? <laughs> Just throw the lob already." The first one was, I thought, sort of fitting in that it wasn't some grandly orchestrated back cut, yeah, you know, yeah, no yeah. look type of deal. Yeah. It was Chris Out of Paul necessity found himself in a situation where he had no other thing to do with it and just decided to throw it up to the rim and let the seven, three and a half guy go get it. And that's sort of exactly what people were calling for the Spurs to do last year. Right. Like, why not? Why isn't that your backup plan or your first plan? Right. Throw it up to the rim and let him get it. I thought it was cool. Or your default plan. Or your default it plan. turned out to be last yeah. night. Yeah. There were a couple uh, when Chris looked 
uh, down the court. It wasn't like the old school Clippers, uh, long lobs to Blake Griffin types that were the highlight reel types. It was more like Chris Paul's bringing the ball up the court, has not reached half court yet. He sees Victor down there close to the basket. Let's just throw it over there to his general vicinity. I think we'll see more of that. Yeah. Like that's not exactly X and O like right. brain surgery, yeah. but it can work every now and then. And there's a lot going on there because, I mean, obviously he's Chris Paul, so he's talented enough to do that. Mm -hmm. But also he's Chris Paul, so he has like the like the skins on the wall to be able to try that. Mm -hmm. Like if you're Malachi Branham last year, mm -hmm. maybe you just don't, you feel like, oh, if I mess this up, you know, I'm going to get in trouble. Chris Paul don't care if it, if it doesn't work, he's still Chris Paul, you know, and they're not going to mm -hmm. bench him for that. That's so a definite. You, uh, more of that. That's a definite um, aspect that Chris brings to this team is just that I'm I, I that confidence in decision making, where exactly what Jeff was talking about, whether it's Malachi Branham or um, even down the line to um, Jeremy Sohan or Keldon Johnson's. It's there's a tentativity, tentativeness there, because they haven't been in the big games before. Chris is not going to second guess himself. But and that that should help. They've all got to be better at that, though. And they do. And Wimby seemed confident last night that he's seen enough in practice that there's there's improvement across the board with the team. Hopefully, but yep. you would think they've all got to be better at hit. Yeah, you know, taking advantage of his immense skills. What do we have in the uh, in the Q and A's queue there, Nick Talbot? All right, we can take one out from David. Thackeray, if I can see this right, because my eyes aren't that great, is Wimby working on a go-to post move? Let's let's talk about Wimby a little bit. Who, <laughs> who, <laughs> who? That's that's been the talk of the first week of training camp, right? Yeah. Yes, but we haven't. I mean, Boy. we've seen one game, and he Boy, played in the paint twenty minutes. And what was funny about Victor last night is uh, sitting up on the platform with uh, Tom Orsborn and. Mike Monroe, we uh, were uh, noting that Victor just looks like he's he hasn't played in yeah. months, and he's coming out there just trying all kinds of ridiculous right. stuff that he would never try in games. And what in the world is Wimby doing? He's not doing the post move thing. He's pulling up from 35 feet. He's trying nutmegs. He's he's throwing wild passes. And after the game, Victor pretty much confirmed that. He said, this is time to experiment. Time to experiment. And, and mess around. And uh, what is it? You, you'll find more forgiveness from the coaches yes, now. Right. Forgetful. Forgetfulness. 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 <laughs> um, but to answer the question, like, I, I think that's, I've written it. I think Jeff and Tom have touched on it. Like, that's the next step for um, Victor's offensive evolution in that he spent all of last season doing the wild not even wild, but just jaw break, jaw dropping, uh, highlight reel type of stuff where he's bouncing the ball off the backboard to himself. Mm -hmm. He's he's uh, he's doing these god sham god moves on the perimeter. Um, I think he's gonna. The next step is to be more Tim Duncan ish in that. Just develop a boring post move that works every time. And he talked about how that's something that he is working on the the simple type of stuff. And we'll see it maybe not in preseason games against Orlando in the early October, but down the line, that's going to be a huge thing. Talked about doing it, but haven't seen it yet. Right. The answer to that. He might not want to put it on tape for the, uh, for the opponents yet. What's his ceiling this year? Is he defensive player of the year? I mean, if, if he had played like he did at the end of the last season for the I, entire season, he's probably defensive player. Feels of the year, like right? He's got to be the favorite, right? Yeah. Going into this year. I think the GM, uh, poll came out last week, uh, earlier. Yeah. Last week. Yeah. Sometime last week. Um, and he was the best defensive player in the NBA among the, the, the NBA's 30 GMs who voted anonymously, it was like 80% had victory. It was not close. And uh, so the talent is there. That's not necessarily predictive of who wins defensive player of the year, but he's he's clearly that guy. Uh, it seemed like almost like a week after Rudy Gobert won that award, there was like buyer's remorse among, yeah. among the electorate. Yeah. You know? Victor said last year went that went after that award was announced, like this is this is Rudy's last chance. Yeah. Like it's Enjoy it now, <laughs> yeah. old, old guy. If he's <laughs> defensive player of the year, if he's defensive player of the year, do you think he can progress enough to be this season's on the all NBA team, third team, second team? I I think he's how far does, how far does he improve this year from think, last year? I think he's got a shot to make an all NBA team. I mean, like a good shot. Like yeah. almost I would be surprised if he's not on an all NBA team if he keeps growing from where he was at the end of last year. And a lot of it's interconnected to, are they going to win more? Right. All of this is predicated. A lot of what we're going to talk about today is, can they 
win 30, 32, 35 games. Again. And, and that's one of our questions is, you know, what's a successful season for the Spurs? We touched on a little bit and we talked about 35 wins, but is it, would that count that as successful with 30 wins, 35 wins? Is a play-in successful or is playoffs a, win, a playoff win even where they Play, would say? Playoff win is just un, incomprehensible right now. <laughs> I can't, I, I cannot imagine that you get past the play-in into the playoffs and win a series. Like that's, that's a lot to ask of a team that still has a lot of parts. Well, the that. question wasn't for a series. It was for a win. So technically, technically one win in the okay. series would be a win. I, look, think about it this way. Um, 33 wins. Mm -hmm. That's a 50% improvement. Yeah. Yeah. But well, you go from 22 to 30. That's so it, huge. Yeah. Apart and 33 wins probably is not good enough to get into the play in, yeah. in, in the Western conference, a really good conference. The conference is just so good. Who, yeah. You got to think about like, who's not going to be in the top 10. Well, you gotta, Utah, Utah, <laughs> Utah. <laughs> Utah and Portland, everybody else. The in West the is pretty good. Yeah. Has a has an argument for it. If you're counting on Memphis to be terrible again when they have John Morant back, back yeah. Houston's just loaded with uh, recent top draft picks. Like I don't know where that who who have we not mentioned. Like Phoenix might implode at some point, but I mean you're talking about a team with Kevin Durant and Devin Booker and Bradley Beal. It's hard to see them not being the top eight. You know it, that's why it's just like like 33 wins is is a is a real improvement I, and it might get you to 13th or 12th place. I know people are so excited and want this to be like so good so quickly, but it just, it doesn't work that yeah. way. Well, they do have a lot better point guard situation than they did last that year. Was, if, you, if you do extrapolate the Trey Jones point guard. Yeah. When he was at point guard, that was almost a 31 in last that team. Was, they were what, when he took over five and 29, four like and 29. He was, it was and then they seventeen of their wins I've, came. With seventeen him. of their wins came. I've, they I've, would have been a thirty win team if they had just I've, I've, done I've what everyone mentioned knew. It, I mentioned it, it before, but the Chris Paul effect is that um, last year the Spurs lost twenty eight crunch time games, which it's tied for the most of the league. Yeah. Define uh, for for the for the listeners at home. Define crunch time uh, within five points in the last five minutes. So they're games that get into the fourth quarter. Basically, there what, 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 what we'd say in the old days is a fourth quarter game. Fourth quarter game. They lost 28 of those last year. If Chris Paul gets you one third of those, you're up into the mid 30s now. Yep. Yep. And does he? I don't Which know. Could but, happen. but that a lot of the games they lost were because they didn't have a guy like Chris Paul in the fourth quarter to mm -hmm. take it home for him. He brings a so, calmness. So that's that's your yeah. That's the optimism there. I like the cameras. Do you like the cameras around here? I don't think we're supposed to talk about the. I keep going. I keep doing the little JD Vance. You're clip. gonna give away. <laughs> it's supposed to be uh, natural. <laughs> While we're talking nonsense, we got one nonsense question that Jeff is gonna love: Is could the Madison JV basketball team score on Wimby if Wimby was wearing clown shoes? Who, who sent that to me? <laughs> it was anonymous. Okay. I knew you would love it though. Well, that sounds that's like a, that's a Chuck Blounty. Yeah. R.I.P. Uh, R.I.P. Chuck Blount, yes. a great, great friend of the podcast, great Express yeah. News employee, great San Antonio citizen. We miss dearly he would come up with those uh hypotheticals that would just and what involved mind. clown shoes so uh, this is so what was the question again is, could wimby uh could uh, madison jv basketball team score on wimby if wimby was wearing clown shoes i uh, that would be <laughs> interesting uh, so five on one five on this i assume is, five well, on I, one i haven't i seen, think i have i haven't seen the madison jv play recently or does he mean uh, my Madison JV team from back in the day. That's that's why this question is fascinating because there's all kinds of inside jokes that are kind of yes. in, interspersed, and they're they're from two different worlds. Because how many people know that you played on the Madison JV? Yeah, what uh, I was gonna say, basketball team. Plus, know the Chuck Blount clown shoes hypothetical. Plus, if you're talking about the team that I was running point guard for, mm -hmm. hell yeah, we'd score on. Because you had Jeff Foster. Yeah, he was like our third best player. Yeah, former NBA sure. star Jeff Foster. The uh, sorry, Jeff. Th we don't want to get sidetracked here, but the classic Chuck Blount hypothetical on which this question might be partially based was: it was the year that the Indianapolis Colts played in the Super Bowl against the Bears, right? And they had Dwight Freeney, yeah, and yes. they did just an yeah. awesome defensive line, yes. And the and Smithson Valley was the best football team in the San Antonio area, which they often are the best football team in the San Antonio area. And the question that Chuck posed was: could Smiths and Valley have scored on the Indianapolis Colts defense if every Indianapolis Colts player was wearing giant clown shoes. I don't, I don't know if there's an automatic answer to that. It was it was fascinating. Probably, but they wouldn't have scored on the Bears that season. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, what's next? That's that's enough frivolity. Um, they could have intercepted Rex Grossman. Though. <laughs>
<laughs> Thanks for the nonsense, though. I love yes. it. We love nonsense. All right. The next question we got is is a serious question and probably one we've been debating is what happens with the guard spots with Blake, Malachi, Trey, Castle? Who's the odd man out? And uh, this the last part is does Castle go to Austin? I think that's an absolute no. That's no. an absolutely no. That's yeah. a good the the Malachi, Branham, Blake, Wesley a part of this is, is fascinating and. And I think that just to answer right away, I'll, I'll jump ahead here. Uh, Stefan Castle is ahead of those two guys right now. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Not necessarily in like game readiness to play right away because he's a rookie and he's going to make some mistakes, but they're far more committed to Stefan Castle than they are to those other two guys. Like he's yes. going to be yeah. integral to repeat that word to this season and to the future. He's not going to get squeezed out by either of those other two guys. And people make question people is, ask about Austin, but have they sent a top ten pick to Austin like ever? Can, am, I, am I missing one? Like I don't think Vassell played. Vassell wasn't even a top ten pick, right? Yeah, he was number eleven. Right? I don't think he's even. I don't think even he played in Austin. Like, so not, that, that part unless of it it's is, a rehab, it's rehab like, or something. Keldens, Lonnie Walkers. Yeah, yeah. It's when they would send guys to Austin when they were the. The, who asked that question, Nick? I want to prop, props. Oh, it was a, and that was an anonymous one. Oh, anonymous. Put your name Not, on stuff, people. Put your name on stuff. We do have some names coming up here. Almost everyone I filled it out we, should, we talked last night about Malachi and, Tra- and Malachi and Blake, that very topic. And yes. Blake, he's really come on defensively. He came on late last year, and it's just continuing. So let's also... We, Playing pretty well as a point guard. So let's break it down for people, for the, uh, the anonymous fellow there or or lady there clearly uh, understands the dynamic. But for those who don't, Just, we have uh, uh, for the San Antonio Spurs, Chris Paul and Devin Vassell projected as starting guards. You have Trey Jones. Angela, yeah. Tra- Julian Champagny has been playing, so you figure he's going to be in the mix. And you have Trey Jones and you have um, Stefan Castle, who I think are all definite guys who are going to be playing at the guard position. Mm-hmm. I'll make Keldon Johnson more of a forward type and we won't have him in this discussion. But that doesn't leave a lot of that's that's five yeah. guard types already that you figure are going to play a lot. That doesn't leave a lot of rotation minutes, if any, to Blake Wesley and Malachi Branham. Oh. So they're already up against it. Then, Jeff, you can explain the contract situation, which is going to present itself by Halloween. Yeah, they're both under contract for this season to come, but the Spurs have to decide on October 31st or by October 31st if they would like Blake Wesley or Malachi Branham to be under contract next season. It's called a fourth-year option yes. off the rookie deal. It's Spurs option. And if they, by October 31st, exercise those fourth year options on uh, Malachi Brennan and Blake Wesley, they're both between four and five million because of their where they were picked in the draft. Well, then that money is guaranteed to them next year, a right. year after this one. And uh, it's an in- it's an interesting decision because that's not a lot of money in the in in terms of percentage of this year's salary cap. But if you want to clear up space to go after a big fish next summer, you might not want to be guaranteeing Malachi Branham, for example, four point seven million dollars. If you need that four point seven to chase some free agent, I think that they probably will exercise both yeah. of them. Because they generally always do, mm. unless somebody's just a complete bust. They generally, sometimes do. But I, if, do. if I'm Malachi Branham, I, if Lonnie Walker didn't get his, oh, he didn't. No, that's good to know. You're, yeah. you're, you came prepared. Um, yeah. If I'm Malachi Branham, I'm not, I'm not uh, like buying a new house yeah. in San Antonio necessarily right now. But I, I think but it, you are if you're Blake Wesley. I think Blake's pulled. With Tom and I, I were talking I about this. I think he's pulled I ahead. He's pulled ahead. He's got a commodity that. Greg like Popovich pulled ahead. likes, and you know he, you know he kind of indicated that he could throw Steph and Blake in on occasion to just disrupt things defensively. He is a he is an NBA level defender. It like was that. it was a couple of weeks ago on the podcast where we were just trying to name the top ten guys like a ten man rotation, and we were down to like there's one spot left. Who is it? And like yeah. it wasn't Blake Wesley. It wasn't my like they were already on the bubble. He's yeah. gotten better at the things he's been weak at finishing. He finishes pretty well now. He still can't. He still can't shoot. shoot. Still can't shoot, but he, you know, he's got twelve assists and and one turnover through two. That's that's playable. And yeah. if, if you had asked me at this time last year, he's really bought into what Pop wants. Which to of those two guys was going to be was more likely to be in their plans at this time this year? I would have said Malachi Brand over Blake Wesley like easily. Mm-hmm. And I, that's totally flip flopped. Yeah, he can, you know, he it's gets totally freaky hot, <laughs> but. And it's just not consistent enough. And the defense isn't there. The question with Malachi is just what what is is his NBA rotation level skill? And, uh, you know, 
he he got drafted because he can shoot, but I, I don't think he shot well enough to to override some of the stuff that he doesn't do as well. You know, the defense. I'm, I'm not sure he's a great shot creator. Um, it'll be interesting. I so so if if we're gonna project, you think of those two player options that are due by October 31st. Well, I agree with you that they usually pick them up, so they'll probably pick them up. But yeah. if you had to, if you told me one of them wasn't going to be picked up, and this is just me guessing, this is not reporting. Mm -hmm. Like just from what we've seen with our own eyes, it would seem like Blake Wesley's got the inside track there. I agree. Do you think Blake Wesley could get minutes away from Trey Jones? That's kind of interesting. Well, yeah, not at first, but eventually. Trey's not Trey's an un unrestricted free agent next year. I mm -hmm. think they value Trey so much yeah. that. Uh, that he's got guaranteed minutes. But if Blake progresses as they hope he progresses, you, you figure he's a longer term, higher upside type piece. Better on, on ball defender. Didn't didn't last night um, Blake play a lot of minutes alongside Chris Paul? I noticed there were some minutes yeah. alongside Chris Paul, which yeah. is kind of interesting too, where you have him, like you have two point guards on the floor. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't think you can play a lot of NBA minutes with, that to some two point guards on the floor last year. Sometimes they didn't have one yeah, yeah. zero. Yeah. Do you so, need the you, Blake Wesley needs to improve his shot a lot for that to work. But I, I think that they, in fact, we know that like, we've heard from a lot of the guys around the the team um, players, staffers who are really positive on Blake Wesley. So that could be a, a huge deal for them this year. If he comes along, they've really liked that Wesley castle combo on defense. And they yeah. used it in these yeah. probably preseason yeah. games. They've really liked to, that. to attack dogs. Yeah. They're mm -hmm. there. Speaking of Castle, a question from Isaac Greenwald Mibtach. I'm sorry I'm, I'm, if I'm screwing up your it's name Isaac. here. We'll just say Isaac. Uh, other than Wimby, which player are you most looking forward to seeing this season? Other than Wimby. Jeremy jumps out to me. That's a good answer. You know, he's, uh, you know, it's it's the year for him to make that improvement, I think, and, and uh, become a better shooter. He's worked on that all summer. Uh, with Jimmy Barron, the shooting coach. Um, so yeah, he's he's an intriguing His shot. Looks a little better. Yeah, in this little bit we've seen. Yeah, he's shooting free throws with two hands now. Yeah, the well, shot is, is it? It's still not. It's not doing the like as the world turns right spin. It yeah. actually looks almost. But it's not. Uh, it's not over the top. It's not. It's not Steph Curry. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's never going to be Steph he's never Curry, gonna be Steph, right? But uh, it, it, I think the encouraging thing there is uh, we discussed this on the Spurs Insider podcast this summer. Uh, you can get that on all your podcast listening devices, you right? Can, you can indeed. But the last time we talked to the players last April after the season finale, that's he seemed to to be a little hesitant about whether he was willing to remake his shot Jeremy Sohan we're talking about here because it clearly needed to be remade and the encouraging part for the Spurs is he clearly made an effort to do that this summer I think that's step one for him is admitting mm -hmm. step one for all of us admitting when you have a problem <laughs> that needs to be addressed and so he admitted he had a jump shot problem and at least jump started Remaking it because this jump, jump shooters anonymous. Man, here. it is. Uh, we talked about this at some point. Um, just how tough that often is. I think Mark Dagno from the Oklahoma City Thunder. That's how you want to pronounce that. Go for it. How do you want to pronounce Coach D? Coach D. Uh, about the psychology of rebuilding yeah. a jump shot when you're a professional basketball player, like you've shot the ball the entire. The, your way, your entire career. It's part of who you are. It's very personal. And to to totally deconstruct that, it feels unnatural and awkward. And like, it's a huge step for even a guy like Jeremy Sohan to say, hey, I need to completely break this down and start over again. Yeah. And I think the fact that he showed that he worked on that this summer, it's it's a big deal. Not to go too back in time, but um, what, what they did with Tony Parker, what Chip England did with Tony Parker to address that, psychological part of it was they showed him video of tiger woods mm -hmm. like changing his that's, his that's great his swing over the years and said hey if tiger woods is willing to work on a swing and adjust mm -hmm. it then you can work on your 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 shot and that that worked on tony like it got him to buy in mm -hmm. and i think that answers jeremy gold's question which you know you wanted to know would be an improvement of success for jeremy so thanks to jeremy for asking about jeremy jeremy gold's <laughs> always all over uh, the 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 tweets isn't he i recognize that name 
<laughs> Our next question from that Shout out to Jeremy is uh, from Emilio Gonzalez, uh, who said, is, please say hi to Tom and let him know that it's Emilio here in Scottsdale, Arizona. He wants to know, uh, uh, do you see any diamond in the, any diamond in the rough in this group? Uh, that, you know, we haven't talked about whether it's a second round pick or anyone like that. And, uh, he also wanted to know about Danny Green retiring and our thoughts on that. We got lots of two questions about Danny Green retiring. Okay. So we're going to have to touch on Danny. Let's a little do bit. it. I think Jeff should lead the Danny Green uh, discussion because you, you, he was your guy for a long time when, uh, as, as a beat guy, as yeah, a guy. Yeah, my favorite dude. Yeah. One of my favorite dudes. Tell him why, tell the, tell the listeners, tell it, was it Emilio? Yes. Tell Emilio why Danny Green was one of your favorite locker room guys. Do you, do you have something specific you want to, like, are you leading me to something? No, like, no, I, oh. I'm being, I, I know you're, it, it's off-putting maybe that I'm being genuine. <laughs> yeah, I didn't recognize that on you. No, Je <laughs> no. Uh, Tom and I both had many conversations with Danny Green over right. the years, just a great locker room guy, but he was your guy for a long time. I mean, I was. Because as a beat guy, you want somebody, go ahead and yeah, tell I me. Was, he, he, I mean, I was there when he came in as just like a, a numb nuts. Like, he, mm -hmm. I guess he played in Cleveland for a while. He'd been mm -hmm. bouncing around the G League. Well, and then the Spurs had a had had a habit at that point in time. They just bring up guys and they'd be there for a week and you never hear from them again. And then I think there was a game. I can't remember what year. I don't I don't know on my timeline. I don't know what year Danny came in, but um uh Manu got hurt in Minnesota, broke his hand, and Pop starts starting Danny. Oh, I remember what happened. Whoever Pop started in 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 Manu's place, which I think was James Anderson, mm -hmm. they're playing Golden State and Monte Ellis was torching him. Uh, Pop's just like, we're going to throw this Danny Green guy out there. And he did a pretty good job defensively on Monte Ellis and start knocking down some threes. And a couple, uh, you know, a couple games later, he's in the starting lineup. And we're like, what was this guy doing? And um, I think we we're calling him Danny Grenobly at that time, just uh, <laughs> for fun amongst us. Um, but he was still just a guy that was around, but he, mm -hmm. he was in the locker room a lot. And because a lot of times those guys aren't even in the locker room in the, in the open periods. Right. But he was just a guy just to stand. You're, you're, you're kind of looking for someone like to talk to. So you're just not right. standing there right. like an idiot waiting for the person you really want to talk to. Right. So you just, so he was good in that. And then I remember you could just go up to his life. <laughs> he probably talked too much mm -hmm. with the Spurs, uh, liking probably probably there was one specific time i remember and again this is like a guy that's barely on the team um like it's one of those where they come out in the second half and pop calls a timeout like with like they give up a little dunk pop calls a timeout in thir 13 seconds and i just kind of sidled up to danny at his locker afterwards just kind of casually I was like what, what was that all about he's like yeah richard they, we talked the whole halftime about don't let anybody go don't let anybody go middle don't let anybody go middle. <laughs> 13 seconds in richard lets his guy go middle pop calls time. i was like well that's good information thank you danny for the folks at home <laughs> he's talking about espn personality yes, richard jefferson yes. there they might be like a co-worker soon maybe you might be. Know. i don't know Danny's gonna talking. have a long future in media, i think but he was always good always accessible always um you know, when he got traded, you could call him on the phone and he would great talk to you about it. Three and D guy. Big part of those uh, yeah. those those great teams. Like one of their great well, thirteen and four, fourteen. One of their finals. great diamond like we, yeah. he mentioned diamond yeah. in the rough. Finals MVP. One of their great, great diamond in the rough finds, like yeah. like I mentioned, came from nowhere and was huge part of those finals teams. Great. Just huge. Chase down blocks. Just, yeah. Tough, tough guy. And he was a guy that Pop didn't know if he's gonna be I'm there was the, that was the other story where like just Pop cut him once, I think once or twice. Yeah. And at one point had to call Roy Williams at North Carolina and say, would you talk to this guy? Like he just doesn't get it. And yeah. so after Roy talked to Danny, he was, came back in a little more. Right. He was like, could you talk to Danny? He keeps talking to McDonald too much, giving away too much information. <laughs> he's Well, he's one of those guys too. That was that, a joke, by the way. That was a joke. He's one of those guys too, that by the end of his time here, he was sort of, um, uh, taken for granted in a lot of ways yeah. by the, by this. And I'm not calling out the Spurs fan base here. This happens at, with every organization. When you have this diamond in the rough who nobody expected anything from Danny Green as Jeff right. so eloquently pointed out and then became integral. And then at the end, it's like, why do they keep playing Danny Green? It's it, the, these expectations have a way of rising to a point where, where it's almost unrealistic. And at the end, he, he got to be older yeah. and not as productive yeah. and then left the Spurs and won two more championships. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That 2013 finals where he just couldn't miss was yeah. one of the most unbelievable yeah. things. Him and Gary Neal nearly shot them to a championship that year. Pretty great. Yeah, he almost couldn't win a title without Danny Green, just like him. Thanks. Good one, good thanks. one, Emilio. Thanks, Emilio. Good guy. Louder than a furnace good, fan out there. Good in man. Yeah. Thing. He's a good man. Yeah. All right. Norman wants to know with, uh, 
which is going to help lead to more wins, I guess. Uh, more teams bagging for a flag this year or the ministry bagging restrictions for flag <laughs> or the ministry restrictions removed from Wimby. I thought it was going to be, I thought we were going to, we just decided it's going to be taking a poop for coop. That, that, it's for the fans at home uh, who aren't aware, Cooper Flag is the by far the uh, the biggest prospect in next year's draft. He's going to be playing for Duke, uh, not Wimby necessarily, but pretty pretty coveted. I don't think uh, the win, win, minutes restriction weren't a thing for Victor for most of the second half last year. I think. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah, that was more with his recover yeah. from injury. Type. Early, early, early in the year, when he December kept, period where he got he, stepped on. He kept twisting his Dallas. He kept twisting yeah. his ankle. Yeah. Yeah. Victor's going to play a lot. Victor's going to play probably as much as Victor wants to play um, this year. The tanking for Cooper Flag, I think that happens around the league organically. Um, no one's going to start out the season other than maybe like Portland, Portland and, and, and Utah. Uh, no one's going to start out that way, but the moment like a like last year, John Morant gets injured, Memphis because of that, then a lot of other injuries yeah. in Memphis, they just decide in the middle of it, like we why are we trying to win anymore? So we you can't necessarily predict who's going to do the tanking thing. I don't think that'll play a huge role in how many games the Spurs win. I guess maybe one or two at some point, but um, I don't think the Spurs will be one of the one of the tanking for no, flag teams. No. no. All we know is the Pistons will not win the lottery no matter what odds they have. (laughs) (laughs) They're going to get the fifth pick and then get upset. All right. Uh, Another person wants to add, this is an anonymous question, but he wants to know how soon does Castle move into the starting lineup if he keeps playing this way? Would he replace Barnes or Sohan? And he's already shown he's good at both ends of the court. I think we're going to have to wait a while for Castle to get into the starting lineup. I think they're going to take it slow with him. No matter how well he performs, I think... The plan is for him to start the season coming off the bench, right? And I, I think mean, they're pretty committed to that. Yeah. And if for no other reason, he he um, made two three point shots last night in that game and uh, looked pretty confident doing it. He missed another one off the front of the iron where he didn't look as confident. Um, I think that he has that. As they said when they drafted him, he has good form and they believe he's going to be a good productive NBA three-point shooter at some point in his career. I think as a rookie, he's not, I don't think, I'd be surprised if he's the type of guy where like he's a knockdown three-point shooter at any point this season where that's a big part of his game. And if that's not a big part of his game, having him in that same lineup with a point guard and with Jeremy Sohan, like I think that's a lot to ask. I think that's why he might be better coming off the bench with with different guys. And I think they see value in letting him as a rookie sort of slowly get his feet wet and immersed in the NBA yep. instead of immediately or even quickly, um, you know, facing that pressure of being a, a, in a starting lineup with Victor Wimbanyama and, and Chris Ball. Yeah. Yep. They, they were never concerned about his three point shooting, really. They just, he just didn't have to do it. Um, well, I mean, I, I don't. I, I think, think they, they understood that the numbers were not good, right? Right. Right. And whether he had to do it or not, like the 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 twenty five percent three point shooting is not good, right? But they thought they thought it that was he had easily a, correctable, whatever flaw. They thought it was yeah. correctable. Yeah. yeah. Sure. You take out the adjective easy. <laughs> I, would, okay. I would take out. The, I would take okay. out the, okay. the adjective. <laughs> he's got a good. It's it's not like he's a guy who had terrible form that they have to rebuild. Right. Right. Like yeah. start with his yeah. with his form and work on. They they think he'll he can probably be better off the bat percentage wise than he was at UConn, but yeah. he's also to use your analogy not going to be Steph Curry his first year either. Yeah. More breaking news. Yeah. All right, Mark Davis wants us to talk about what happens with Keldon this season. That's a good question. I thought it was interesting that uh, when we talked to Pop about Keldon, he kind of said we don't know what his role is going to be. He wasn't com- really committed yeah. to him coming off the bench still. Right. Mm-hmm even though I think that's probably where he's going to end up. But it's hard to tell right now because of the injuries. And Keldon didn't play last night against Orlando. He did start against Oklahoma City, but the Spurs also had some guys out. So it's hard to know. Healthy late scratch with him. Yeah, it's hard to to know. I mean, we don't have... We don't have Pop telling us or even showing us what they plan to do with Keldon. If you're asking me what I think, I think he's still off the bench as he was last year. I think he was... They moved him there for a reason. I think he can be your go-to guy off the bench, which is the reason to put him there. If I think if Keldon's not involved... He's just kind of floating in that starting lineup. He's a guy who needs to be involved, I think. I think we've, we've figured that out about him over his years here. He's the longest tenured spur. If he's floating, he's, he's not what you... You don't get that energy from him. 
And the best way to get that energy is to have him kind of be the guy with the unit. And he can never be that guy if he's playing with Wimby and Wimby Chris, Paul, and Chris and Paul and Devin, Devin Bell. Bell and yeah. So it makes the most sense to keep him off the bench. And that's why, you know, the question there is when does that guy starts one before when does Steph, Stefan Castle get to start? When does Keldon get to start? Like the Spurs don't necessarily see that as a promotion. Yeah. Yeah. Manu Ginobili played yeah. most of his Hall of Fame career coming off the bench. And it's not that he was demoted below Danny Green. It's just that he he fit better the, coming off the bench. The Spurs and a lot of other teams around the league have over the years come to realize that it's better to split up your good players in some ways. Yep. Or your scorers in some ways, not have them all lumped together yep. in the in the starting unit. And then as the game goes along, you can mix some of those guys in. I mean, Keldon might be in there some of their closing units, you know, even if he yep. doesn't start, but he's I I think he, you're going to see him come off the bench for most of this year. Almost a hockey philosophy. And he'll also be uh, well, you know, he'll be on the trade market too, you know, until well, February. Uh, his name will be out there for sure. Mm. One thing's certain, he he genuinely is in great shape. Yeah. I mean, he is cut out the bucky. Very trim, yeah. We had that long discussion with him at, after practice about Bucky's and yeah. He's not going to go there anymore. And got to make sacrifices. Yeah, you know, got to make sacrifices. I promised that he'd double the buckies for him. Mm -hmm. And then we walked away, and our our buddy Mike Benner mm -hmm. was elbows to me, and he goes, uh, "Hey, what's Bucky's?" <laughs> no, <laughs> I swear to goodness, name me a better gas station. <laughs> well, I think most of our that, listeners that was Keldon's quote. Name what else we got? Nick? Well, we got a couple of questions on Devin Vassell and what he he needs to bring this year, and when he'll be healthy again. The. Uh, the verbiage on that, we discussed this on the last yeah. Spurs Insider podcast, which is available on all your podcast players. Like uh, Spotify? Spotify. What about Apple? Apple Podcasts, um, YouTube. Do I have to listen to it on my phone or can I just type it into my www? You could type it in your www. You can listen to it on your phone. You can listen to it while picking up your kids from school. How would I do that? Just uh, like uh, on the radio, like the terrestrial. You use your Bluetooth? Bluetooth? Yeah, you what, you use what now? Bluetooth on your phone. Oh, yeah. Okay. Anyway, uh, the, the Spurs say they will reevaluate his injury on November 1st. Which uh, we we had this debate last time, but uh, I, thought, I, I don't think he's going to be playing. I think the way first. to phrase it is they are hopeful that he. Well, um, this is a lot of caveats as I spit it out. They are hopeful that he might be able to play that first week of November, maybe not on November first. And I said hopeful. You know, if you, they get there and he's not, but I do think he's in the. He's not in the like like rehabbing the injury phase. It's more just a, a conditioning phase and ramping up that part of it. It's not a, like he might hurt himself phase or he's not recovered mm -hmm. phase. It's just more making sure his conditioning, he hasn't, he hasn't been able to do, really been able to do much until now. So it's making sure his conditioning is in, sh in shape before he can. He appeared play. to be going pretty hard in practice the other day when we got to see him going up against staffers. He looked pretty. And when he comes back, he needs to be, um, he needs to be better than he was last year. He, I mean, he, he didn't have a terrible year, but he, that's their second score. How's he going to be better? That's their second, How just more consistent, more reliable. Um, I don't know. Uh, I, 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 he, he's a huge, he's a huge I part of their improvement. A, yeah, I think he had a good year. I think with what you're saying is we need to kind of limit limit those games where he scores six. That's what I mean. He doesn't, he, you know, he doesn't have to score twenty every game, but just those be better. A few, a few less, a few less of those little mm. clunkers where he's oh oh four or whatever. And as you know, uh, this is your 18th NBA season on the beat. Like a big part of the, a big skill in the NBA is just avoiding those, those bad yeah. nights. Yeah. That's what the good players do. They don't have the clunkers as often. Cause a lot of guys, a lot of guys go out and score four. Like it's crazy how many just random guys have gone out and scored 40 or 50 on a, on a given. How, night. how many players on the Spurs training camp roster have scored 50 points in an NBA game? <laughs> hmm. One. Victor never got there last year, right? No. no. Uh -oh. Is it Harrison Barnes? It's Malachi Flynn. <laughs> Malachi Flynn. <laughs> Had a 50 right. spot last year. For there you Detroit. go. There you go. For, De for Detroit. Well, that's a copy yeah. right And I there. think I think someone told me the next day he was like 0 for 7. Yeah. 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 <laughs> then the next game. Speaking of guys, you get, get cut. We got a couple questions. From, uh, <laughs> wow. Lay lay him, man. Lay him and uh uh I lost the other person's name, Chuck and and Chuck uh Shipman. They want to know uh who uh, will get cut this season? Who's on the roster now? Who's not going to make the team? Which guys are going to kind of get sent to the G League? And 
Do you see anything in any of them like a Harrison Ingram? That's Tom or category Riley. there. Well, Harrison Ingram's headed for the G League. Yeah, he'll be, he'll be a G Leaguer. Yeah. Yeah. Explain to the viewers at home uh, about the uh, the ro- the roster limits and the two ways and all that type of stuff. Because because your Spurs have fifteen they guaranteed have 15 contracts, guaranteed spots for fifteen spots. They're all filled and three two way contracts, which are currently filled by David Duke Junior. Uh, David Duke Junior. Hmm. Yeah, got through the and Harrison team. Ingram. Harrison Ingram, so the second round pick. So two of the three they two ways a, they have a are one. filled. Riley Minix from Moorhead State is yeah. in competition for that third two way spot. And and the Brandon, Boston kid. Brandon Boston. Yeah. yeah. Brandon. So one of those probably gets a two way spot if they don't go sign someone else. And Malachi Flynn, he of the fifty point game with Detroit, doesn't have a spot. Yeah. The, to keep Malachi Flynn, you'd have to cut someone off the main roster. Malachi? Malachi Branham. Yeah. Some, Who has, and Malachi Branham has guaranteed money he for does have guaranteed party this money. year, $3 million, something like yeah. that. So that's, to answer that question, it's pretty cut and dried. Like the, you have 15 guaranteed rost, roster, we have 15 guaranteed contracts for 15 roster spots. The only person who could fill one of those spots is Malachi Flynn. To to give him one of those spots, you have to cut somebody. I mean, the real eat the money. The the real the yeah the real battle is for that third two way spot, which isn't really a sexy battle to right. cover. Right. But generally, the roster is what the roster is. Yes. A couple of people here like the game of Riley Minix. They're hoping he uh, pan out sp- or is a sleeper. All over the Riley Minix. <laughs> <laughs> well, who is who at this table has talked to Riley Minix more than you have? Nobody. Not really. <laughs> Not really. I didn't okay. talk to him in summer league, and Jeff and I have talked to him okay. equal amount. All right. Uh, I'm trying to give you credit. Uh, Mark has uh, had another uh, questions for us. Uh, 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 who will end up being the better backup for a victor, Mamu or a Zach? This oh, is, this, this is, is going to be fun. Well, Mamu's not going to be a backup for Victor. I think yes. Zach Collins right. is the backup five. Yes, that's the, the question is. How does Mamu? And this go is what floor? I've been waiting for all. What, we're, what, we're, what time we're is getting, it? Forty-seven. We're getting wait. Like this is the highlight of the it's show. Been, it's been two. We should have been two two preseason games. It's uh-huh. been two. We should not have started with Harrison Barnes. We, we should have started with Mamu. We really should have. We would have kept more. Mamu Kelishvili. It's only been two preseason games. Like needs to play more. We could be getting ahead of this ourselves. This is the hot take of the of the I, I don't think so. I think we're all in agreement. And but, but I I am I am okay. He, let's preface Mamu, this by saying that Pop. Uh, Accurately asked Mike Finger last night, Are you his agent? <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I asked, what are you, his agent? I asked Greg Popovich, What does this is? I was speaking for the fans, I'm speaking for everyone in that little machine you have there. Uh-huh. <laughs> Who the, our loyal listeners, because I think this is a question they want to know. So I asked Greg Popovich, What does Sandro Mamo Kelishvili need to do to play more? And Pop said, well, he was agent. He was agent. <laughs> and I said, I would take that money in a heartbeat. I'd take 10% of Sandro Mamu Kelishvili's future earnings in a heartbeat. But anyway, Pop basically says he needs to be more solid all, all around. Uh, Which makes sense. He I didn't flat out imagine. say he needs to defend better, but that's what he needs that's to That's what do. he means. But the thing he did say if, was if he, I mean, it's been two games. I keep putting, they're going to, but if he keeps shooting the three like this, it's going to be hard to keep him out of there yeah. because they don't have anybody they can shoot. Yes. So yeah. if this guy's going to come out, I mean, he's not going to hit 60% from three, but if he can shoot to, to Close to 40, yeah. plus all the other stuff we know he can do. Yes. There's a spot for him. There's a place for him in the rotation. What, uh, as we all know here, like it's, it's not just that Mamu is a shooter. Like he's not just a spot up guy uh, who's, who's waiting for his opportunity. Right. His three. Right. He knows how to play the game on one end of the floor. He is like the, the, what Blake Wesley is to the defensive end. Mamu is to the offense. That was a, that was a good analogy. There. He does he he because he doesn't just stand and shoot. He moves the ball. He cuts. He he passes. He is a playable guy on the offensive end. And if he could just not kill you on the defensive end, Pop didn't say this last night, but I think he, uh, there's more to to what he said about playing confidently, stroking the three pointer. You know, whenever he has the chance, all that type of stuff is true. But um, there's moments. When mom was at the other end of the floor where, especially if he's up against the center, sometimes even against a power forward where the guy's just too, he's bullying him down there yeah. mm-hmm. and he's given up offensive rebounds. And that's what he can't do. Mm-hmm. Like you don't have to be a defensive stopper if you're Mamu, but you can't be down there just letting your guy play volleyball on the, over the rim like that. And I think if he can just be passable, he's a guy who could really help because he's fun. 
<laughs> and 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 uh, like I think he played even, well with Victor. Even, That's the even other part. pro yeah. basketball players like to have fun when they're playing, and those guys like having Mamu out there. Yeah, he's not a guy who's just gonna you you pass the ball to and takes the shot. Like he's gonna pass the ball back to you if you're Victor or Jeremy or Devin. I think Mamu should play more. Whether whether or not he's a defensive black hole or not, I think it'd be it'd be great. I think well, there's definitely a spot in the rotation if he's and playing the way he's been. If playing. If you listen yeah. to that, Tom transcribed it. But if you listen to that, um, you you probably have a better uh, memory of it. But there was a line that Pop gave me in there about how he's going to give us something to think about, and we and we yeah. probably well, should yeah want to give him on the, get him on the floor yeah. more. He said that, that makes. It, that makes him somebody we have to look at very seriously yes. if he's going to continue to make shots like that. I think he'd be, I, I, I would love to see him play more just because he's fun to watch. Another quote from Pop that stood out to me last night was when he was talking about CD Sissoko. Mm -hmm. He's going to be a good part of our program for a long time. Man, yeah. I, he continuously, he does, he wants in the worst way to, and I don't want to argue with a Hall of Fame basketball yeah. coach, but I just don't see it yet. Oh, I like CD. No, yeah. they're going to, they're, yeah. they're going to run out of spots. And he, yeah. All right. Well, that goes, segues into our next question. When we're running out of spots, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we've already talked about the rotation. Uh, the Spurs have tons of picks. Who's trade bait on this team? Uh, Julian, Keldon, uh, Trey Jones, who's who's trade bait? Well, Trey Jones and and uh, and Julian Champagne don't. The, the Julian Champagne is making three million dollars a year. It's then hard move to move the needle. You Kel this Kel Kel Keldon's name will come up because of his contract because and of his what contract. he makes, and that mm -hmm. makes other trades work. The the there's an there's an obvious answer. It's Keldon because of what Jeff just said. It's just because of you can't go get somebody good without trading. Eighteen million dollars worth of contract because that person good is going to be making eighteen million dollars exactly. or something. In there so if a move is made this year on the trade market, meaning by February the trade deadline, or even next off season, like a guy who's going to be involved in it is almost certainly going to be Keldon Johnson. Um, that's not an insult to him. They like him. That, that's why he's, he's a great team up the summer yes. all the time, just it's because it's almost not like they're not trading Keldon Johnson. They're trading the number next to his name. Yes. The contract number. So unfortunately for Keldon, like, and, and I'm, I'm sure that's just, uh, I can't imagine just to, to every time you turn around to hear your name and trade stuff, like he, he wants to be here. He Especially loves when you love it here. You're he loves his, little, love, his here. little ranch and he's always out at UTSA stuff, UIW stuff. Like he's a, he's a true San Antonian. Name me a better San Antonian. Name me a better San Antonian. Uh, the other person they threw out there for trade bait, Isaac threw this one out there. He's already asked a question, but uh, he's Zach, the trade bait at all because Zach Collins with his contract. If a trade is made this year, like that I money th might be able to be used, but he's, he's, he, this is last well, year, right? No. Oh, no. He just got re-upped last I'm summer. Like, I think he's got too many years. Well, then there you go. That, the he's issue there, the issue unless, there is, does another team really want to take it? Yes, unless you get to something really good. Yeah. Uh, All right, well, do, you, do you think there'll be, I don't want to jump in, but do you huh. think there will be a significant trade uh, this season before the trade deadline? I always say no, because they're, Really isn't. If you're talking about bringing in like a player, mm -hmm. I don't think so. The Spurs where make a lot of in-season trades. Where you'd you'd categorize it as the Spurs being buyers. As the Spurs game. trying to make their their current roster better mm -hmm. for this season. No, I don't think so. I don't think so either. I th like the, the it could work the other way where uh, if if they're not competitive and somebody wants Chris Paul, like I could see that happening. Yeah. What if there's some situation where some other team is imploding and just shedding yeah. a guy you might want? Yeah. Going, I don't know. I don't. I don't have an example of that. Trey Young. I'm just kidding. <laughs> what else? We're not doing that. Trey Young's not. not <laughs> at least that's over. That's <laughs> couldn't resist. And we haven't seen Zach yet. So play. Yeah, he's yeah. still coming back from the shoulder yeah, thing. But he's supposed to. I think he might play Saturday. Is what I heard. But. He has to shoot better. Yeah. He has to shoot. Oh, better. he knows. And I that I that was one of the biggest surprises to me. Well, I mean, there's a lot of surprises. One of the biggest surprises to me last year is that how his shooting just fell off a cliff because it just seemed like he was getting better and could have at least stayed where he was but it's just a much like jeremy he's admitted i don't i don't want to have a problem with yeah him. i don't want to reward this pr behavior uh i'm not going to mention the name because i don't even think i remember the name but did you get the unending emails from the people who are trying to set you up to interview zach collins about some new uh workout studio that he was uh that he was attending in stone oak like i know we don't want to we, we don't want to do free publicity for a workout studio anyway 
<laughs> stop. Mean? Stop. Well, Go ahead. It just goes to Lanier. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're, we're winding down here. So I'll do this for our final question from Andrew, who says, we all know the pop could coach until he's a hundred. Oh, assuming boy. he begs off. No the joke. Next, he, assuming he begs off Seriously. the next couple of years. Who do you consider a prime candidate to replace him? I had, had hopes for Will Hardy. I would love Will Hardy. I don't know. Utah ever wants to let Will Hardy go. What I hear from the people in Utah is they keep trying to make that roster so bad that they get the first draft pick and Will Hardy keeps winning too many games. They'd love to. Uh, so they love Will Hardy. They love Will, Will Hardy. Yeah. It's a matter of could, could, well, part of that question that Nick asked was assuming Pop begs off in the next two years. I would not make that assumption. Yeah. He's going to coach till he's 100. So that's <laughs> the decision. He's going to coach till he can't, I, I think. It's no joke. Mm -hmm. um, he's just a lifer. Um, so I don't know. If I, I could be wrong about this, but I just think that, uh, if the Spurs are looking for a head coach, it's because Pop had no choice but to but to walk away. Okay, but let's let's say within the next two years, looking for a head coach who who are the guys. Well, Hardy's probably first on your list on their list. They would try. Um, they'd probably see what Quinn Snyder's up to. Yeah, they I'm do, just thinking they, about they guys. They do like, like Quinn. That wouldn't be a very popular move. I don't I, think. I agree. Um, who else is on your on your list? Becky Hammond? I'm not... Uh, I, I'm, I, she might be on the list. Yep. But I, 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 I'm not sure that would She's happen. been on a little, lot of lists and hasn't. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily content. have to be someone who's coached here before, although they're, they're almost very, everyone in the league has. Big on corporate knowledge. And the, uh, Chris Paul? Um, actually, there you go. <laughs> actually, I think I have the answer. Um, it's who Victor Wimbanyama wants. Ah. That, Say it. Hmm? You, you pronounce it. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not saying, I'm oh, not saying Vincent I'm, Collet. I'm just saying, who, I'm just saying whenever the Spurs make their next decision who emerge along those who, lines, yeah. it's, you're going to ask Victor Wimbanyama, like, do you have a guy? Collet signed with Cleveland, right? As a Collet, oh, yeah, Collet is yeah. not going to be that guy. I like Collet right. a lot. Yeah. I talked to him, with, yeah, no, I talked I him with, in France a lot this summer at the Olympics. He's awesome. I love him. Yeah. And he's also older. Um, they're going to hire someone younger. Uh, I can't believe that we're talking about this because I think Pop's going to be here for yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. But it, when that comes up, I think Victor Wembanyama is going to be consulted on all of this, so they wouldn't necessarily go out and and hire. That's that's. Yeah. So we should address this question to Victor the next time yeah. we see him this, after a uh, game. This is probably a clear answer we had in the past, though, because the answer now is just whoever. Yes, exactly. Whoever Wimby wants, right? Exactly. And so this basically, is, nobody we just said. This isn't to say that Victor yeah. will have a name and say, "Go hire this guy." He might not. He might say, "Well, who do you?" Victor, Victor's very deferential yeah, to the yeah, Spurs, yeah. and oh, do you do you like this guy? I like this guy too. Yeah, I mean, but I think that he will be consulted on anything. He, like he might be throwing his weight around a little more 10 years from now when Pop retires. He might be. <laughs> All right, we'll end this with final prediction round fast as you yeah. can. How many wins do the Spurs get this season and do they make the playoffs? 34, um, just short of the play-in. 30, 36 and same. 35. Look at that. Yeah. I, 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 I had him pegged for 36 too, so I think I just, reversed, just out... He reversed prices, right? It does. <laughs> and I think that'll be I think that'll be good for the tenth thing of the plan, and then the, that's a coin flip. Yeah, I'm getting to there. So it all it, hinges it, on Harrison Barnes. It all hinges <laughs> on Harrison <laughs> Barnes. Maybe get to the plan. Like it doesn't take a whole lot to get there, but that's a it's a deep conference. Yeah, like it's I'm really, not going to be shocked yeah, if it's it really did pick. I mean, every, it's going to come down to like who gets injured this year. That's yeah, what it yeah. always comes down to. Exactly. I think, yep. I think it's going to be a fun season. You know, I just think that's your prediction. I think it's going to be a fun. It's going to be a little Christmas. bit more Christmas. promising than Definitely. last year. Mama's going to play a lot. <laughs> yeah, Mama's born mean, predicts fun. Yeah, that's his prediction. That's yeah. a lot of joy this year. Thirty minutes joy. tonight for Mamu. Yeah. <laughs> then uh, right. All right. Well, that'll wrap us up. The finger, you want to take us home? Get, hit us with the tagline. Take, take care of each other out there and keep it real. <laughs> <laughs>